Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your trusted weather source here with this special edition update here as severe weather season 2025 is going to be kicking into overdrive here as we go into Sunday and Monday. And boy, we're talking about a very large part of the country that'll be under the gun for severe weather. So coming up in this report, we're going to tell you about who's under the gun, where the worst conditions are going to be, and what you need to do to keep your family safe. Now, before we get into this report, if you're not yet a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button in that lower right-hand corner. Hit the notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, if you appreciate this report, please leave me a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. It does help with that almighty YouTube algorithm. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Storm Prediction Center. So if we go ahead and break down this storm system, one of the unique aspects of it is just the sheer scale, the scope, how much of the country is going to be impacted by the system. And what's interesting, we were actually tracking two separate systems. We've got this one that's coming in for Sunday and Monday, and then another one coming in a little bit later in the week. So we're talking five straight days of severe weather there. And of course, April, statistically, climatologically speaking, is our most active severe weather month. And boy, is it kicking off in a big way. So we're going to first take a look at our day one outlook. We're going to break this down for you here. This will be coming in for tonight. Now, when I show you the model daily, you'll see why. But right now, we're seeing that slight risk that's covering right there across portions of Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma. So we're talking about Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Tulsa, Wichita. Those are the ones under the gun here for severe weather. This will be coming in again, forming in for tonight and going into tomorrow morning. Now, the initial assessment, as far as the tornado risk, it's pretty low. We got a little bullseye there, about 2% there across Kansas and into Oklahoma uh, for potential isolated tornadoes. Not expecting that much with this. Now, the wind threat obviously is higher, running about 15% there across Missouri into Kansas, Oklahoma, again, where that slight risk was outlining there. That's also the bullseye for the hail threat as well. You see that there covering that same location. That brown on either side, again, that's about 5% there, stretching from Iowa down toward Texas as far as the hail as well as the wind threat for those areas. So let's go and check out the day two. This is when things really get cranking. Obviously, we have that enhanced area for severe weather here, stretching from portions of Iowa, Illinois, stretch back into to Arkansas, northern Louisiana, coming in through Tennessee, and kind of extreme northwestern portions of Alabama. My target zone here is going to be right about in there where kind of Missouri, western Kentucky, and uh, portions of Tennessee, uh, maybe that's where the highest risk, I think, for potential tornadoes are going to fall uh, looking at the latest model data. So let's go ahead and break this down as well. Look at your tornado risk. That's running about 15% in that bullseye in that area I was just highlighting here, also kind of coming into northern Alabama and northern Mississippi. All right, so the hail threat will uh, and the wind threat will break down like this. The wind threat, obviously, very big. Uh, again, uh, seeing a very large red area here uh, showing a 30% chance for some severe and gusty winds and in excess of 60 miles per hour into that zone. And as far as the hail threat is concerned, look at that one, also relatively high, running about 30% in the same location. So these are going to be isolated in nature, isolated to scatter, but boy, when they do, they're going to be packing a punch, uh, that is for sure. Now, as this thing begins to move off toward the east, you'll see where it shifts over to the east coast as we look at your day three. And look at the, this, stretching all the way from New York State, all the way down to Louisiana and the Florida Panhandle, a very large area as this frontal system begins to exit, uh, mo moving into some pretty moist and buoyant air out ahead of it, and it starts to clear. Now, that's system number one. System number two coming behind it as we look at your day four outlook here, we got a bullseye right there for day four. Uh, that's the initial assessment of that next storm system coming out right through there, through Kansas and into Nebraska and portions of Iowa. And we go into Wednesday, Thursday time period, day five outlook. That's where it really picks up. When you see an enhanced outlook this far out, you know you're looking at something that uh, could potentially be pretty big here. So we're talking about going from Ohio, stretching back into Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, basically the same areas under the gun today. We'll be under the gun again a little bit later in the week as we go in toward Wednesday and Thursday. So we need to go ahead and do a deep dive, a deep analysis here and break down the model data and show you how this thing's going to track out as we go through Sunday and Monday. So let's get through the first storm system first. So we're going to begin back over here at the weather walls. We're going to highlight a couple of things. We're going to talk about the fuel source. We're going to talk about instability. In weather lingo, we call that CAPE. And when you, our CAPE source is definitely the Gulf, okay? Looking at the Gulf of America down here is we're going to be tapping some warm moist air coming in out of the Gulf and into the Midwest, okay? So that is the fuel source for these thunderstorms. This is looking into your Sunday afternoon. So we're going to have the fuel source there. In fact, we're going to have a pretty good instability for not only this system for Sunday and Monday, but we're also going to have it 
for the later system on Wednesday and Thursday as well. Where we're going to see a difference between the two is the wind energy component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to track you through this one first, and then we're going to look at the wind component to these two systems to kind of show the differences between the two. So again, keep a watchful eye on that timestamp there as we kind of track this here uh, as we go through the forecast period. So again, we're looking at the, how things are going to be increasing. I'll back this up a little bit here as we're going to see that instability definitely increase here. That's going to fuel these thunderstorms as they erupt. We have that initial group that's going to be firing up tonight, going into Sunday morning, and this pushes off toward the east. You notice how it goes up down to the south. We get that drier air that's going to be filtering in behind that system, and it shoves it down to the south briefly, okay? But it's going to quickly come back up as we look at later in the week. We're going to bring it right back up out ahead of that next system going into Wednesday and Thursday. So we're going to have pretty good surface cape for both these systems to feed off and fuel those thunderstorms. It allows the lift of these thunderstorms to go higher into the atmosphere. With the, the more light and buoyant the air mass is, the higher the thunderstorm can grow. All right, now let's talk about the differences between the two systems, okay? We're going to be first here talking about the jet stream. What we're going to be watching is a couple pieces of energy for this initial round. We got this energy back here uh, across uh, southern, the southwest portion of the U.S. That's our initial energy that's going to fire up these storms as we go in forward tonight. So this is going to kick on in here and moving up into Oklahoma and Arkansas as we go in toward uh, tomorrow morning. So this is what we're watching for, that initial surge of energy. And there's going to be another one back behind this one. So here's our first one that's kind of pushing in. You see the very high jet energy here up toward the north. We'll be watching these thunderstorms on the southern portion of this. And then we got another uh, summer energy back behind this. So we got some upper level, strong level winds that are going to be moving in. This number one. And then here comes number two coming across Alabama, Georgia, going late in the day on your Monday. That'll be pushing those thunderstorms as they escalate out. So, but you notice the big difference here. When we look at the jet stream configuration of the wind energy, we're looking for something with some very high amplitudes. Whenever you see that changing amplitude like that, that's usually a good indication you're going to have a tornado out, tornadic outbreak. We're not seeing that with this initial group. We've got a couple little minor little, little uh, you know, troughs in here you got little ones in here just they're, they're minor not very big but they could still spit out some thunderstorms where it could produce some tornadoes now the one behind this one a little bit different story as we go in towards your wednesday oh boy you got this thing really diving got this thing diving down and doing this kind of configuration so uh much much stronger jet energy to work with here and we're also dealing with uh you know a jet stream that is changing we've got showing some signs of definite wind shear in here uh, going into wednesday and thursday so a much stronger system appears possible as we go toward the middle of the week so a big difference between the two systems so let's go ahead and break down the high resolution model we're going to be looking again we're going to watch that initial severe weather that's going to be breaking out here uh, across this area now this little low here is going to be continue to track up this way we got this initial rain here across the southeast out ahead of that main storm system but again, the, the main severe weather will be kicking off as we go in toward, heading in toward tonight. So as we go toward 9, 10 o'clock, here it goes, right there. Going into Oklahoma, coming into Kansas, that is our target zone here for that initial severe weather. That slight risk we showed you for that day one, which actually goes into early Sunday morning. A day one outlook there uh, shows that coming on in. So what we're going to see that uh, initially firing off as we go into the morning hours there on Sunday, that pushes down through Missouri. Uh, going to seven o'clock in the morning there and then eventually going up into illinois but it does weaken as it moves up toward the up toward the north so that's that initial severe weather we're going to get then we're going to wait till the daytime heating we're going to wait for that instability that juice to really kind of fire up those storms a little bit later into the afternoon as we go into the afternoon hours there where we start seeing this stuff start to erupt here across uh this portion of the country from indiana stretching back toward texas as we start getting that daytime heating and we start firing up those thunderstorms there uh, pushing off toward the east. So he really starts getting fired up there across Indiana and back over toward Arkansas and, and over toward the areas of Louisiana. So we can go in a little bit closer. Let's go look at the eastern half here. We're going a little bit closer here so you can kind of see how this breaks down. I'm going to break this back, break this down once again for you. Let me back this up. And again, you can, you can see how this stuff's going to pull on out. We're going to see the, the, the initial rain. Here's that the initial surge. This is that initial severe right here through across portions of Missouri. That's the initial one coming in for tonight and going into tomorrow morning. And then as we get that daytime heating throughout the day, again, as we go in toward 4, 5, 6 o'clock, we really start firing up some thunderstorms here. And these will be the ones that could potentially uh, fire up some uh, thunderstorms with some strong gusty winds and, of course, isolated tornadoes, especially as we head in toward the evening hours here. I've got to really watch this area under the gun from Indiana 
uh, going into Kentucky and into portions of Tennessee, western Tennessee, as we go into the evening hours going into Sunday night, uh, which is always going to be very dangerous. And we've got a very strong, robust line of thunderstorms here showing across Arkansas and in Louisiana. Obviously, the further south, we have higher cape, better fuel for those thunderstorms down to the south as compared to the north. So also looking pretty strong there uh, going in toward Monday uh, morning, very early Monday morning. All right, now let's look at the, the significant tornado parameters. Significant tornado parameter takes the instability, takes the cape, it kind of looks at the different parameters and puts it into a formula to kind of show you where the best tornado threat's going to be. So as I go to take this forward here in time, you can see here the tornado threat coming right into this area here going into late afternoon on Sunday. So we've got those thunderstorms, they flare up. Uh, not that high. I mean, running about four. I mean, not, not, not off the chart. But like I said, this particular event did not look like a, a huge tornado outbreak. We could still see some tornadoes here. I think up to EF2 are definitely possible with this uh, as the EF1, EF2 range. And this kind of moves on in here going into Sunday night. This is 9 o'clock at night across Tennessee uh, going into portions of, of Kentucky. That's my main concern right through there. And then eventually you got to watch these storms, obviously, down here to the south as well, going into Louisiana, Mississippi, threes and fours. So they're not terribly high, but the tornado threat is definitely there. They're going to have to watch very closely going into Sunday night and Monday morning. Those nighttime events are always the most dangerous because people are obviously sleeping. All right, so let's go ahead and track this system. We're going to look at the European here. We're going to be looking at uh, this initial storm coming in together. So we're watching that this outbreak here going into towards your Sunday night. So we're going to watch the thunderstorms right through here uh, as they flare up going into Sunday and into Monday morning. And then they'll push off toward the east. So as it does so, the, again, the east coast is showing that slight risk. You got the slight risk here going throughout the day on your Monday as that storm system begins to exit. So that's what we'll be watching there on your Monday. And then as this continues to move off, watch that next system come on out. And this one's a little bit stronger, showing a 986 uh, low pressure system. Pretty good. There'll also be a winter component on this, although I'm not expecting a blizzard with this one. But definitely a, a snow component with this next storm system there across portions of, of Minnesota, stretch back into the Dakotas, and then into the UP of Michigan. And we'll have to watch this zone here for uh, severe weather. And I think the tornado threat will be higher and we'll know that for sure as we get a little bit closer to it as we go in toward Wednesday and Thursday of this upcoming week. And that'll be that'll kind of stay in that same area. I don't think it's going to make a real push here into the southeast as the main energy kind of shuts off there a little bit. There's a little bit of ridging here across the southeast. I think it'll protect the southeast a bit. Uh, but this will kind of move on off. And then we'll, we'll see what happens a little later in the week here with another little disturbance here as we wrap up the seven-day outlook here uh, on the European model with some more showers and thunderstorms from the mid the Midwest down into the southeast. Although this doesn't, going into Saturday morning, that doesn't appear to be severe at this point. All right, let's look at the rainfall totals here. This is what we're expecting here on the short term, looking at uh, the, the rains here uh, for this first event. So you're looking at some pretty decent rains across areas of Wisconsin and into Michigan, upwards of two inches. You got two inches down here uh, of isolated pockets here from Louisiana into Alabama and into Georgia. And not really looking that bad here across the Midwest, maybe about an inch or so. So the flooding risk doesn't appear to be too high with this, but we are going to see some heavy rains. But one thing is for sure that's happening. Once we get these two storm systems by, looks like we're in store for a little bit of a pattern shift. And there's been a pretty substantial change in the climate outlook from this, uh, the Climate Prediction Center. So let's go over to the wall and take a look at that. So the six to 10 day outlook has been pretty consistent here from the Climate Prediction Center, showing the mild weather here in the, the east and the below normal temperatures are out in the west. So we see storm systems have been coming, coming on out and kind of slamming into that warmer air. That's what fires off these severe events like we were gonna have going for Sunday and Monday and again later in the week. What has changed as far as the outlook is concerned, we go out beyond six to 10 day, is a significant cutback of that warm air. We're going to finally cool some of this air down. In fact, the European model was suggesting a pretty good cold snap here. Uh, and you can see the model right there. Yeah, kind of showing a real big cold snap here, kind of coming down here across a big portion of the country. So we're going to trim this away here as we look out from the 5th through the 11th. So a little bit of a big change here from what we've seen the last couple of days. Precipitation outlook staying pretty active here with the flow across the southwest and across the, the south central portion of the United States with above normal precipitation, the 3rd through the 7th, especially with that bit next big storm system coming in here on the early portion of this. And then going out from the, the 5th through 11th, a little bit below normal out here on the west coast, but uh, still staying a little bit active here across the southern tier with the precipitation chances staying a bit above normal. So it looks like we're in store for a very busy week here, folks, and you guys need to pay attention. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you need to go ahead and give us a subscribe if you can. Go ahead and join our family here. 
Uh, we are planning on doing some uh, some live severe weather coverage. Of course, the big boys out there, they really can't give you the specialized service because there's too many of them. Their, their little chat streams are moving so fast they can't answer anybody's questions. But uh, we're a smaller channel, so we do appreciate to give a little personalized service, a little personalized love. And uh, if you'd like to join us for our coverage, we're going to do it on your uh, Sunday and on your Monday. So again, just look for the, we'll go ahead and set those times up. We'll have them out there. So if you're a subscriber, you'll get that notification of when we're gonna do those live events. So please subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate y'all's feedback. Again, we're heading to the heart of severe weather season. You guys need to be uh, prepared for the season. Looks like it's gonna be a bit of an active start, uh, especially going into that first week of April. All right, that's it for now. You guys take it easy. I appreciate you guys checking us out. Again, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next update. You guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.